All right, Mighty Miles UFL on YouTube. Y'all go subscribe, man. We out here with Coach Trey Hill, man. Give me your stuff. Hey, you start lifestyle, man. You already know we promote good health and balance. Come check me out, though. Yep. All right, man, we're going to give y'all some scenarios today. Not, this is, this is going to be a different type of video, man. We're not giving y'all boxing and MMA uh, stuff today, man. So we're going to go straight into some street fighting shit. So we're going to give y'all some circumstances. Uh, I'm going to give you three things of what I think works in the street. Um, and then Coach Trey will give you what he wants, and we'll go back and forth with what he thinks will work and what won't work from a boxing point of view also. But I'm going to give you three things, man. And, and, this is, and these three things, man, remember, guys, these are to – try to not injure yourself. So not break your hands, not break your legs, not try to scuffle on the ground where you can eventually get hurt yourself, you know what I'm saying? Even though I'm a wrestler and all that stuff. What, I want, what I'm trying to do is not injure myself. So the first thing I'm gonna do in the streets, man, by far, is if I can avoid going to jail, or us getting locked up, or somebody getting injured, is I'm gonna try to get out of the scenario altogether. But as you know, like I know, um, being in the bars, if you're drinking or doing whatever, sometimes getting away from a scenario is not going to happen. So I'm going to go three tactics to show you if you cannot get out of the scenario, if you can't get away from the problem, if you can't defuse the issue without conflict. So um, the number one thing, like I said, I'm going to try not to injure myself, man. All right? So we're going to put... Um, you want to you want to say something first? Yes. All right. Uh, another uh, aspect I'm bringing to this video, we're going over knockout scenarios as well to add to the, the street effect. And by far, you don't have to to hurt yourself to knock out your opponent. It's only one pound of pressure needed, and it's best to catch them off guard. So instead of putting so much power, let's add speed and technique into it. On top of what he's doing, you should be able to use it in any case scenario. And I'm going to say this, man, like guys always, I hear people always be like, oh man, you know, somebody starts to fight, I'm going to wait till they hit me first. I'm going to wait, you know, from from the the areas that I've been at in life, man, the places that I've been, man, if you let a person hit you first, nine times out of ten, it's going to be too late for you to do anything. You know, if you're in elementary school or something like that, you might get away with that, man, but as a grown man, if you wait for somebody to strike you first, you're in a bad position, man. You know, so to me, if we've already, come, if I've already come to the conclusion that we're gonna, we're gonna throw down, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit you first. I'm gonna attack you first. I'm, I'm coming at you offensively, and um, I'm aiming to hurt you, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna wait for you to try to hurt me. I'm not gonna stand there and wait for you to knock me out. You know, yeah. period. Setting the tempo is very important. You getting off first ensures that you set the tempo. You want him to fight your fight. You don't want him. To, you don't want to fight their fight. And like you said, elementary school, you might get away with a couple shots, but being grown and, and, and the education being power, and he hits you in the right spot, it might not be a fight to deal with. So handle your your your, your situation accordingly. Be the first one to get off. Set the tone. All right. I'm gonna put that on real quick. Let me get the pause. All right, man. The first one I'm gonna show you, man, is a punch to the solar plex, man. Again. You know, least injury, hitting the man in their face, man. You know, if a person knows how to hit, you know, that's fought before, and you hit a guy in the face, man, you could possibly kill the guy. You know what I'm saying? So, and and, and, it's, and it's, that's not that's not being unrealistic. You know what I'm saying? You might knock him out, but nine times out of ten, man, you could injure them like that. So I'm gonna hit straight to the solar plex. Anybody that's ever fought before, especially with MMA gloves on, if you've ever been hit in the solar plex, man. It's, a, it's an ender, it's a finisher, man. It's a straight finisher, and in the streets, for guys that don't know how to fight, it's gonna it, it's gonna take them out. I don't care how big they are, you know what I'm saying? So, if we're standing here, and we're, we're beefing, and we're, you know, we got issues and stuff, man, the first thing I want him to think is that, hey, look, 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 I'm, you know, I don't wanna fight, I don't wanna fight, and shit, all right? So, this punch right here, you guys have seen us do this in boxing, where we step back and hit the pad, all right? Same scenario, coming down into the solar plex. So I'm standing here, he's coming forward on me and stuff. So I stand here, I'm back in here, bam, straight to the solar plex. Man, that one punch, man, can take a person out. Right? It doesn't take much, you know what I'm saying? He probably felt it through the pack. Oh yeah, and I've been hit like that in competition, man. It yep. took two rounds for me to get my air back. Yep. The most powerful part to this routine is the step back. It's giving me a false security to move forward and I'm walking right into its power. Yeah. It's very good to have this in your 
repertoire because you can use it in mid combination in fights disregarding the street situation that you can end it, but still you can put it together in the competition. Box. You do the competition. Yeah. You know, like I said, we practice it, we practice it on the pads all the time. We practice it all the pads, uh, you know, with the sticks and stuff. So we'll show one more time. So I'm coming in, I put my hands up and I'm backing out here. Boom, coming straight down to the solar plex, just like that. And nine times out of 10, man, it's gonna take a person out, man. Like I said, you know, this is a different type of video than what we're used to doing. Usually we show you MMA stuff and boxing and stuff like that. You know, we both train, we both fight at different gyms and stuff like that. So we're just coming out here, just going back and forth with this for y'all, man, for YouTube and stuff, man. All right, the third one I want to show, oh, the second one I want to show, my fault, is, is basically, is, like I said, you're not trying to injure yourself. This is going to be a smack to the ear. If you guys watch the new stuff that you guys see on YouTube right now, they got this shit called smacking contest or some shit on TV. And if you watch that shit, yeah. these dudes are standing like almost at an arm wrestling table, man. And they're literally allowing themselves to get smacked. And these dudes are getting knocked the fuck out. Girls and guys, they're getting knocked out with these smack slapping contests. You can Google it, it's on YouTube and you can watch it. It's called slapping contest, man. And um, man, they put the chalk on their hands and everything, man. And they open hand smack the shit out of each other. And you'll see these dudes Slump, over. slump straight over the table, man, mm -hmm. or, or fall back and knocked out, man. So a smack, an open hand smack to the ear, man, to put your ass out. And I don't have to worry about breaking my knuckles. Yeah. When I got to do a fight on the strip, I, pop, which I just palm struck the dude and kicked him. Basically, I didn't want to injure myself, even though I did end up with his teeth in my hand. You know what I'm saying? But I tried to palm strike him. I didn't hit him with my knuckles and stuff. So when you're standing here, it's all about you. So you're standing here, man, I don't want to fight, man. I, you know, I'm, I'm done. Okay, so what you're doing, it's all, in, it's all in your hip. Same thing that you're doing when you throw a hook or whatever. All right, so I'm here, and it's just basically over here. It's like, right, right to the ear, man. It's just a, it's a straight smack, straight to the ear. And it's going to knock their whole equilibrium off, man. They're not prepared for it. Like I said, you hear, man, I don't want to fight. Boom, straight smack. I mean, that I science goes Boom. for kicks as well. You have a handful of nerves right under the earlobe. that if you hit it flush, your whole equilibrium is gonna to start to cave in. It's actually gonna feel like you're bleeding yeah. internally. And that's when you fall to the ground because you don't know how to feel with it. Yeah, and, and I, like I said, man, in MMA, I've been smacked in the ear on the ground. And it's, it, I'm telling you, man, it's, it, it knocks your whole senses off. It's almost, I'd rather have got just punched. Yeah. You know what I mean? It knocks your whole, you don't know what's yeah. going on around you. You get smacked in the ear like that, it's like, yeah. everything is, is, is gone. Yeah. All right, my third one is um, the head book. Again, this causes an issue if he's six four, me standing in front of him, um, he grab we're grabbing. And the reason why I say a headbutt is because if you don't have the possibility to use your hands, which means you've already guys have already locked each other up. You know what I'm saying? And you don't know how to wrestle, you don't know how to, you know, throw knees, you don't know how to clinch, you don't know how to defend yourself. This is just a street the street scenarios. You're gonna headbutt the dude straight in the nose, man. Right to the bridge of the nose. Boom, I'm not gonna headbutt this thing right here. But, but I'm just saying, <laughs> like, like when somebody say, boom, yeah. you throw that headbutt right to their nose. They got your hands locked down, they got your arms locked down. If I'm standing here, you grab me and I can't get away. I don't move and I don't know how to wrestle and I don't know how to do takedowns. I don't know how to clinch you and throw knees. I don't know how to throw elbows. My arms are locked in. I'm gonna headbutt you right in your face. I'm gonna headbutt you right in the bridge of your nose. And it's gonna knock you out. You're not gonna and, hit coaches, man. Well, I'm gonna show you what a tall, what a taller guy. It's the same thing. Come up underneath the chin. Yeah. So I'm coming up. He has my arms rocked in. Boom. Boom. I come up underneath the chin with my head. I won't be able to hit him in the nose because of the height. Of course, I can't try to, you know, this ain't Super Mario Brothers. But I can't come up underneath his chin the same way and use his arms as my leverage yeah. to come up underneath there and catch him right up underneath his chin. So it works with tall guys, short guys. You just got to figure out. Those type of shots, man, are going to get your opponent off of you. Especially the bridge to the nose, the sinuses are acting up, your eyes are tearing up. You're really not trying to move forward with that fight. Headbutt to the chin, you sever that person's second vertebrae and that brain stem, that's a knockout. Yep. Same with a punch. All you need is one pound of pressure. That's it. It won't take much, man. It's the punches that you don't see. We just said it's the punches that you don't see that knock you out, man. Yep. So it's the surprise of your opponent, man. You know, a lot of people think that you guys are just going to stand there and just run each other's mouths and nobody's really going to ever fight, man. Like I said, if I've already came to that point, the conclusion, and you come with Within my circle, I will strike first. Yeah. Period. To add on that, man, uh, technique, speed, and accuracy is the only thing you need to to get a knockout. Take power and erase it from your mentality, because you don't need that that blunt force to drive your opponent down or to make your opponent knock out. But at the same notion, blunt force trauma does work. 
but that shot that I didn't see is going to cost way more damage yep. than the shot that I did see and had a chance to brace for it. All right. So, for instance, if you're throwing a, a, a hook, let's throw a lead hook with your left arm, and I come around and I throw this shot here, he didn't see that hook. All right. So, what I'm trying to do to just give you guys some pinpoints to be aiming for is the chin. Now, when you're hitting the chin straight on, what's going to happen is you separate this vertebrae here, which is called the brain stem that stops the blood to the brain. This is causing a factory reset. This is causing you to go down. You don't know what's going on at the moment because the blood has stopped rushing, right? The message between your central nervous system and your peripheral nervous system has stopped. So you are knocked out. So hitting in the chin is what you should be aiming for. Next, you want to cause a rupture to the brain. So if you cause that head to snap yeah. and you cause that brain to go against the skull cap at vigorous force, yep. it's a concussion. Yep. And you are going to go down with a knockout. You are going to black out. You're not going to know what's going on. Another deadlier punch is a punch to the temple. All right. This is an equilibrium reset. All right. Your whole brain, it's like you turned off a computer and turned it back on without shutting it down correctly. So when you hit in the temple, you are causing the brain to rethink, to remanufacture itself, all right? So they can't step, they're not knowing their balance, they're not knowing where they're going, let alone where they're at. Now another thing that Mouse touched on is under the ear. You have so many different nerves right under this earlobe or on the earlobe itself. So when you cause pressure to this part of the face, you're causing the whole head to encave on itself and it feels like it's bleeding internally to where you fall down and you get knocked out. These are different ways to cause knockouts. You should not put it, everything on power. Speed, accuracy, and technique, especially in the street fight because it's only 30 seconds mostly. So if you hit in the right spot and you don't knock them out, the opponent is thinking twice about re-engaging. Or save even yourself, continue. Man. Save yourself, man. You know, and like I said, try not. If you can get away with not injuring yourself, you can get away with getting out of the, the fight itself. Get out of it. But like he was talking about with the temple thing, man. I've been hit so hard in my temple before I couldn't open my jaw for two mm -hmm. weeks. You know what I mean? So that temple shit's a whole nother, That's another ball game too, man. There's a lot of different things, man, that we can add to this. If y'all got something y'all want to add to it, man. If, we, we probably left out a thousand other things that I could come up with, man. We just wanted to touch on a few different things. Yeah. Before we get into that solar plex, man, man that was, that plex, was yeah. very, that's a great additive because a lot of people don't understand you can knock out with body punches. Mm -hmm. Solar plex, liver, you know, and down, kidney. them in the solar plex, man. I don't oh, care how yeah. big, all that big bicep shit and big yeah. that shit ain't got nothing to do when it comes to this fighting game. Man. Exactly. I've seen the biggest exactly. dudes fall straight apart, man, and especially if they're big and they don't know how to fight, it's a wrap for them. You have these, this muscle build, these these global muscles that sit out and local muscles on the abs, right? So if you're going for the body, try not to aim for the reinforced plates, the chest yeah, and the abs. The sternum, now if you aim in here, the liver, the kidneys, and right here in the, in the solar plex, there, there's no muscles to reinforce these vital areas. So you're causing extreme amount of pain that's gonna force knockouts. And I mean, I've been in a ring where it took me two rounds to recover from these shots to where I'm trying to get my breath, I'm trying to move around, I'm trying to figure out what am I doing in the ring still. You know what I mean? Like, ah, damn, I just got hit in the solar plex and can't breathe. Time out, coach. You know what I mean? But really, honestly, these are some of the vital points you should be trying to aim for instead of just brawling and going for face shots in the nose or hitting them as hard as you can in the forehead that's really going to cause more damage to your hand than his face. Go for these vital spots that we've shown you and you'll have more success with your knockout rate. And if we, like I said, if we miss anything, man, y'all go down to the comment section down below. Add y'all's two cents. You know, if you want to make a video and put a, a link down below, y'all can add that shit too, man. You know what I mean? So y'all can show us some more stuff and maybe other people will see, you know, something that works better than we showing you, man. Yeah, please but do. Y'all go subscribe to my man's channel too, man. He's out here doing this thing, man. And uh, give it to him one more time, baby. You start lifestyle, man. Like I said, I've been doing a lot of work with Mouse. Been in the fight game for a long time. Been trying to educate. Been trying to keep people healthy, man. So come check me out. I love doing these videos for y'all. Like Mouse said, please leave your comments and feedback on the bottom. And we would love to, to converse about some of these things that we're showing you, man, real talk.
I might be doing a cage shit coming up too. Oh, this so I just hollered at Matt. So yeah. I might be doing a cage show, man, coming up. But definitely the grappling tournament for sure. I don't even want to speak on the cage shit until it's 100%. Yeah. But, um, you know, MMA fight. But I'm definitely doing the grappling tournament July 9th and 10th. Man. So that's going down. All right, y'all. Appreciate everybody coming out, man. Peace.